Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. So just so you know, today's video also has two stories and both of them have updates. So now let's get started with the first one. This post is from the subreddit Relationships and it's by user Deleted. My 27 female husband, 30 male, and I are getting divorced and he has to move to another state for work. Should I follow with our daughter, 7 female? So, my husband and I are getting divorced. It's very amicable. He's still my best friend and we're able to civilly discuss our issues. We just aren't romantic, hence divorce. The issue has arisen that he'll need to move within the next few months for work. It would be a couple of states away. I'd already moved six hours away from our home to keep the family together. So our options are, one, I move with our daughter to the new state where I know no one and she and her father can spend the most time together. I can do this because my work is very mobile. I've always wanted to keep them together because I want them to have more than just a weekend relationship. My family and friends think that's crazy. I sort of do too because I'd be moving with nothing. No friends and no way to make them because I work long days at home. I'd be extremely self-sacrificing so my daughter and her dad could have a relationship. But I would do it if it's what's best for her. Always. Or two, move back to our home state and send her to visit as much as possible. This way, she'd have a stable home and wouldn't have to move every time his job required it. Our whole extended family is there, I'd have a support system. Frankly, I've been growing depressed with the isolation and lack of people to talk to, because we move so much. I can't put down roots, really. Even though my daughter would have family and familiarity, she wouldn't have her dad. I'm so torn Reddit, please help. Well OP, it is a difficult situation and I absolutely understand where you're coming from. You want the relationship between your daughter and your husband to be as strong as possible because of course it's a good thing. And in a case like this, there is no option that would be 100% fantastic. In option number one, well, you would be uprooting your child every time your husband needs to move just for them to have a relationship. Also, putting your life in the back burner. In choice number two, you give her a stable environment, but she doesn't get to see her dad so often. Now there's also the possibility of choice number three, which is that your husband tries to find a job where you and your daughter are gonna live that doesn't require him to move around all the time. Now as a father myself, if I would be in your future ex-husband's situation, I would still advocate for you to take option number two. Even though I would love to see my children every day regardless of where we are, I understand that it would be most important for them and their development that they have a stable environment. And I, of course, would be looking for another job in order to be closer to them. And what do you guys think about OP's dilemma? How would you go about trying to figure this thing out? Let me know in the comment section what you would do. And now let's move on to the community comments to see what kind of advice OP got there. Hats and Topcoats says, It sounds like he has a job where it would be expected that he'll have to move again in the future. That would tip the scales towards you moving back home in my opinion. If you would have to keep moving around to keep them together, especially as your daughter gets older, I think she would be better off staying in one place with a happier mother and a lot of other family, including her dad's family, and seeing her dad as much as possible. Skype can help. If this were expected to be the last move for her father, I still might think moving back to your hometown would be the better option. It just would be a harder decision. It's very good of you to even consider moving with her dad. She's a lucky kid. And OP responds, possibly. It is a specialized field and highly competitive, so he has to go where there are jobs. I just don't want to deprive them of anything when I can move so easily. Thank you for commenting. Tells Eternity says, It sounds like the best idea would be to move back home where your support system is. In either case, is it possible to finish out the school year in your current location? I think it's probably going to be important to consult with your divorce attorney on this. I am sure there are custody aspects that will come into play. And OP responds, We're definitely finishing out the year here. Thankfully, we've managed without attorneys as it's been very amicable and we've agreed on everything. RM Rick Zero says, Many people manage to share custody over a distance, and I think that with effort, it's easier in this day and age to maintain that presence and relationship than it's ever been. 
Yes, it's less than ideal, but so is you uprooting your life just so things can be easier on your ex, especially if his job is going to be keeping him moving again and again. And Opie responds, thank you, I just hate that our failings will deprive her of something, it truly sucks. Additional information from Opie's comments. Just to clarify, my soon-to-be ex is the one who suggested we move home. And yes, there will be a custody arrangement in the divorce settlement. He has no fight with me about that because I'm the primary one who raised her. He was overseas for a good chunk of her early years. Basically, he's leaving it up to me. I know that my moving with him will take a toll on my mental health, but he's also dealing with PTSD and I know isolating him from her will also make it worse for him, which I don't want to do. Sad face. I'm just trying to think of my daughter, but it's so hard to know if you're making the right decision. We're both from divorced families, so we want to do what's best for her. Sometimes it's hard knowing what that is. I don't want to keep uprooting her, but the mom guilt is strong when I know I could keep them together. When we asked her, she said she's open to either way and is very adaptable. She loves both our extended family and her father and would be happy either way. However, considering she was open to both options, she was very upset at the thought of not seeing her dad every day. They're very close. Once we explained, she started to understand and at first wanted to go with her father, but now she would be okay with her home state. Soon to be ex is as self-sacrificing as me and understands that my home state is more stable. It just hurts me that she misses time with him because the divorce was my idea. Now, on average, he has to move every two to three years. Ideally, the next change was supposed to be to our home state. However, circumstances haven't allowed for that yet. No openings, etc. Honestly, I can put up with anything if it's for her benefit. For the most part, the rapid decline in our marriage probably contributed to my discontent here. So we're leaning toward the home state simply for stability and to have him transfer as soon as possible. I just hate tearing them apart. Okay, so the majority of the community was telling OP that she should move back to her home state and have some more stability there for her daughter and that she of course could keep up with her dad through technology and visits. Which considering the situation, I also think is the best way to go. And apparently, so does OP. So now it's time to move on to the update to see what happens next, but I'd like to ask that if you're enjoying the video so far, please go ahead and click that like button. Or click the dislike button if you're not liking it so much. And now, we move on to the update. Prepare yourselves, this probably won't be the update you were expecting, it certainly wasn't for me. Okay, so it's been quite a while since I first posted, 6 months. Thank you to everyone who commented and offered your advice, it certainly helped me sort out my thoughts during a difficult time. Unfortunately, things did not turn out the way I anticipated, buckle your seatbelts. Soon after I posted, I began spending time with an old friend of mine. We'd already decided on divorce, or so I thought, and were waiting until after the holidays to file. My husband did not like this, at all. When he realized I truly planned to go through with the divorce, he flipped his crap. He essentially went off the rails. I was totally thrown because, by all other accounts, he seemed to be on the same page with me. Ron Howard's voice, he was not. There's a lot of backstory about our 10 year relationship that would be feed for your llamas, I'm sure, but in the interest of brevity, let's just say we began dating when I was 17. I had no other barometer for relationships, so I assumed his controlling, manipulative nature was normal. I've learned a lot in the months since this all went down, so I know better now. Anyway, my soon-to-be ex has a history of threatening with self-termination. At the time, I truly believed him. Who wouldn't? He'd done a few tours overseas and I've seen him break down. So I called his boss to check on him. Instead of a frantic response from his boss, I received a message that said essentially, No one blames you for wanting to leave him. None of this is your fault. When I asked him to explain what he meant, his boss asked me if I really wanted to know. Well crap, now I didn't, but I said yes. I then learned that not only has my husband been cheating on me for the past 10 years, but he's engaged to a woman he's been dating for the past 2 years. 
and has a multi-million dollar side business that I knew nothing about. I know, how blind and dumb can I be, right? I know this sounds crazy, trust me, I wish this weren't my life right now, but his boss had corroborating screenshots for all of it. To say I was gutted even though we were getting a divorce would be an understatement. I knew our marriage wasn't great, but I had no idea a person was capable of being so duplicitous. My soon-to-be ex was more than willing to let me uproot my life again because he was being ordered to change jobs. Because he'd been messing up at work, I learned. The subsequent months up until now have been a roller coaster. I learned my soon-to-be ex is a narcissistic sociopath, if not a full-on psychopath, and I am the empathetic bleeding heart he has essentially taken advantage of this whole time. Initially, I contacted a divorce lawyer to go after him for everything. The original divorce terms alone make me want to hyperventilate because I knew how much they'd set him off. When I finally confronted him, he copped to the relationship with the other woman and trickled truth me about prior hookups. I'm sure he'll never cop to everything, even now he's maintained he's the victim, he's done nothing wrong. Eventually, I decided the only thing I wanted from the divorce was physical custody of our daughter and the right to move home, which he agreed to. I decided not to go after half his assets. I retained most of our belongings and my car along with support for our daughter, which was all I wanted. Anything else would have drug it out and I don't want his money. The side business was started last year, I believe. I honestly don't know what he did regarding taxes, we didn't share finances, and obviously he was very good at hiding things from me. I'm sure it'll bite him in the butt if he doesn't handle it responsibly. I did speak to my attorney about how to handle addressing his assets. He was offered $4 million by a company to buy the business, but I don't believe he actually has any liquid. Fighting for whatever paltry sums are in his accounts wasn't worth drawing it out for me. He's required to pay for half of her schooling, tutors, private school and give her health insurance. So I'm satisfied. Fighting for more would keep him involved in my life and I'd rather be done before I move. The bottom line is, I definitely won't be deprived. I make decent money, he's paying child support and will split all other costs. I'm good with that. He's never been one to deny her. She's very much the golden child of his family. I'd be worried she'd be too spoiled, to be honest. So within the next two months, we'll be moving home and I can pick up the pieces from this mess and start over. There's still a lot going on in addition to this. It asked, he interferes with any sign of a life on my end, tries to manipulate me into not seeing anyone. We suffered from a two-year dead bedroom, so in my eyes, I've been single for a long time now. And finally, he's angry that I dare to tell him he's not allowed to parade his side pieces in front of our daughter. I included in the terms of our divorce that romantic relationships are to be discreet. He accused me of bringing strange men around, of course, which is not the case. It'll be a long time before I ever trust anyone enough to bring them around my kid for the record. To add to this, he's become the fun weekend dad. He takes our daughter anywhere she wants, buys her anything she wants, lavishes her with gifts and money. I know in the long term, a stable loving parent will be best for her, but right now, it really hurts when she tells me she has more fun at daddy's house. I wish I had a happier update, I wish this weren't my reality. Now I have to deal with a narc ex and how to enforce boundaries when children are involved properly. That'd be great. Anyway, thanks Reddit. Well OP you're right, it's not the most happiest positive update in the world, but there are a lot of silver linings. First of all, you don't feel guilty about moving back home anymore because you found out your ex or your soon to be ex is a scumbag. And also, you know that your daughter's future is secure. So I'd just say focus on the positives and be done with this thing. Thank you so much for sharing OP and here's wishing you the best after your divorce. Take care OP. And now let's move on to the next post that like I said in the beginning also has an update. This post is from the subreddit Malicious Compliance and it's by user SinRaven1642. Satisfying the timesheet police. Backstory. Our company has a very strict rule regarding salary exempt employees. Not even sure if it is legal, but okay. You have to submit a timesheet at the beginning of each month. 
The only thing they want on it is any time missed and how much makeup or paid time off you used. They deduct pay for any time missed that is not made up or that paid time off does not cover. They ask not to submit your full clock in and out and lunches, just any time missed. I do, however, keep a notebook of my in, out and lunch times and have always done so. I am always super early to work so that I can take an hour's lunch every day. It is allowed and a few others do this as well. The issue. Some of the upper management do not like me. I really don't know why, but it is very apparent in the micromanagement style of this place. And so Karen watches me like a hawk. I always get here before her. She waltzes in 10 minutes late every day. She has apparently complained to my supervisor that I take very long lunches and I'm never around when she calls me. Karen suggested that I was likely fudging my timesheets because there was no way I was not using paid time off while being gone for so long every day at lunch. This launched, because she is a fixture here, an investigation into my timesheets. Long story short, they pulled me into my supervisor's office to discuss the issue. They stated that because my timesheets were not explicit, they had to assume I was doing this and that they were assuming that it had been going on for a while and were preparing to fire me based on Karen's suggestions. I then piped up with, but yes, I can prove my times. I then pulled out my time log and they got somewhat quiet. After evaluating my time log, which took a good 45 minutes, they discovered that they, in fact, owed me two hours of paid time off because of my overestimations. I was free to leave. As I walk out of my office, Karen is in my office, seemingly about to start cleaning my personal stuff. When she saw me sit back down, she was fuming. I heard her stomp into my supervisor's office and scream at him for 10 minutes. Everything was pretty muffled, but you could easily get the gist that she was mad I was not being fired. Opie's edit. This all happened yesterday and this morning, guess who got picked for a random drug screen? Lol. Nothing else really happened today after I got back from my test, other than pretty much all other management leaving early for the day. Fry, yay? I snuck out most of my essential possessions, including my Funkos and timesheet log. I figured leaving that at work over the weekend would be a bad idea. They have keys to my office door and like to work on the weekends. Also, here are just a few answers to a few questions that I saw. I am definitely in the US. I cannot go to HR because I am in fact the HR person. Sad face. I am helping myself as best as I can while also trying to help my co-workers. Most of the ones who aren't in the good old boys club are keeping their own paper logs like I did. I will definitely be reporting this to the DOL as soon as I secure another job. I am likely not going to do anything crazy and retaliate against Karen. Whoa. She is old. I would rather not give her a heart attack, as mean as she is. She will not affect the rest of my life once I leave. Well, ain't that a twist. They ended up owing you paid time off. Anyways, like I said in the beginning, this story does have an update, so let's finish the video with that. But also, why don't you let me know if you liked the video by clicking that like button. Now let's get on with that update. First off, I found another job, so yay! I'll be out of here in about 10 more days. So after finding another job, I wrote up a very pleasant professional letter of resignation and presented it to my boss. We will call her Frances. She was very fake pleasant, if that is a real phrase. Very quick to say she accepted it, very quick to rush me out of her door. That day, I did not hear anything out of the ordinary directed at me, but there were several meetings going on in a bit of a flurry. Turns out that there was some drama that didn't involve me going down. Something to do with not having the correct licensing for something. Today was a different story. I was instantly met with attitude from practically every member of management. I was told that I needed to provide two separate timesheets for the month, which is vastly different from the policy. I had to account for every bit of time that I was here for in 15 minute increments. They said I had to prove that I came in early, timesheet log to the rescue or so I thought. They said they were not going to take handwritten copies of logs from me about me coming in early. They said I would have until the end of the day to provide tangible proof of my time. 
Now, I know that my log would hold up in court easily. However, I was going to ply with this demand. Now, we have a card access door to the building. I can easily run a report to see when I used my card to enter the premises. So I did. And they proved that I come in anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour early each day. They then said that I would not be able to cash out my remaining paid time off. I brought up their handbook and showed them that they had to since I provided notice. They said my floating holidays was not payable upon leaving the job. I provided a copy of her signature authorizing me to use it because I requested it in advance, her policy. They then retaliated and said they were splitting my salary check into two different checks, one for this pay period and one for the next pay period, and I can't use direct deposit for either one, whatever. Then they tried to cancel my insurance. I called our insurance representative who then corrected them and stated that I could continue insurance for as long as I draw a paycheck. So they ended up screwing themselves by now covering me through the next month, even though I will not be an employee. They then decided to ask for my key to the building. Keep in mind my last day has not occurred yet. I said sure, but you will have to close for me next week. They decided not to take it, lol. Karen is being suspicious. She brought me donuts today and a frozen coffee with fake smileys yesterday. I'm worried, lol. Happy endings and passive aggressive satisfaction are so much fun, heart. Nicely done, OP. You shut them out at every possible corner. Good for you and thanks for sharing. And that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch it. Now, if you've gotten to this point in the video, I assume that you like these stories that I'm reading out. So here are a couple more that you might enjoy. And if you don't have any time to watch another story right now, save it for later. And also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.